Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Made famous in the 1981 film Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, many of you will have seen pictures of the mysterious stone balls of Costa Rica, hundreds of seemingly perfect spheres of hard igneous rock. No, they aren't ancient booby traps for tomb robbers, but in truth, nobody really knows what they are or why more than 300 of them were made. They are true anomalies of the pre-Columbian era, and because of their mysterious nature, they have been used as evidence of ancient high technology and ancient aliens, as well as everything in between. But this is because there are a number of misconceptions about these spheres. For example, some websites say the largest ones weigh more than 30 tonnes and measure around 10 feet in diameter. People also say they're perfect spheres, yet without taking away anything from their creators, none of these claims are actually true. Some of them are as small as baseballs, yet the largest known ball has a diameter of 2.15 metres or 7 feet, although a more recent 9 foot wide ball may have been discovered, but I'm trying to corroborate this claim. According to Samuel Lothrop, the author of the most extensive study on the Costa Rican stone spheres, the maximum weight of these balls is 16 tonnes. Some researchers also claim they are perfect spheres to within 2mm from any measurement of both their diameter and circumference, yet no such precise measurements have ever been made. Obviously we can all see that the craftsmanship is spectacular and they do have a relatively uniform shape. Maybe sometimes the imperfections are too small to be seen with the naked eye, but to claim they are precise to within 2mm in every direction is not substantiated, and when you look at them up close it is clearly wrong. The balls are not perfectly smooth. There are irregularities that exceed 2mm, and some balls have improved to vary by more than 5cm in diameter. Furthermore, the largest ball that has been discovered is so damaged and so irregular that nobody knows for sure exactly how it once looked. On various websites and in various books by alternative researchers, there are many false claims and exaggerations about these stones. Some say they must be remnants of a lost pre-flood civilization because they say they are impossible to make with primitive tools. Many say they must be more than 12,000 years old, but there is never any evidence or reason to explain why they have to be this old. Other authors who believe South America was the lost island of Atlantis have used these stone balls as evidence for their ideas, but these claims seem to be baseless. And no, you can't carbon date a ball of rock, but you can get a likely estimation of their age based on the stratigraphic layer of sediment they sat within when discovered. And because around 300 of them have been found, we can find the very oldest date and the very youngest as well as an average. The date boundaries based on pottery fragments and artefacts found in the strata directly below are 200 BC to 1500 AD. So, no stone sphere has ever been found in sediments older than 200 BC. Of course this doesn't mean they aren't older than 200 BC, but it does mean it is highly unlikely, and to say otherwise would require some form of evidence, and in the present state of knowledge there isn't any. Yes, in some respects they are a mystery, but contrary to popular belief, they have been studied in depth for quite some time. Locally they are known as Las Balas, which literally means the balls, and are commonly attributed to the now extinct Dekis culture, and are sometimes referred to as the Dekis spheres. They were found in the southern portion of Costa Rica, known today as the Dekis Delta. The actual site is located at Palma Sur, and it comprises an area of land around 25 acres in size, an area previously owned by the United Fruit Company. They were first discovered back in the 1940s, and Doris Stone wrote the first scholarly report in 1943. In the 1960s, more in-depth reports were written, which included a map of the sites where the balls were found, as well as full archaeological analysis of each site. Each object was measured, drawn, photographed, and their alignments and orientations were also recorded. In every decade since then, there has continued to be extensive research, culminating in published scientific and archaeological papers. Between 1990 and 1995, Iphigenia Quitania excavated several balls and documented the process of their manufacture and their cultural associations. So, far from being a major mystery as is often claimed, there is plenty of information available if you're willing to look for it. So, how do the experts claim they were made? 
Well, the most likely explanation is that chunks of rock were shaped by controlled fracture, pecking and grinding. Some of the spheres are made of limestone, which is soft to work, but most of the spheres are made of hard granodiorite. But, as John Hoops explains, the specific rock they are made from has been shown to exfoliate in layers when subjected to rapid changes in temperature. He explains that the balls could have been roughly shaped with a specific process that uses heat, for example from hot coals, and then quickly cooled with chilled water. This would cause the rock to weaken across its natural layers, and then it could be easily broken. Then they were likely pecked and hammered with a rock of a similar hardness or harder before being ground and polished. This is the same process in which ancient people created polished stone axes. These balls are not like the amazing stone walls of pre-Inca Peru, which certainly have a different method of manufacture due to their incredible three-dimensional interlocking nature, mysterious fine-grained joints, and pillow-like outer surfaces. They're not as complex, and to my knowledge there are no anomalies that hint to an ancient lost technology, but they are still wonderful objects to observe. But there is one real mystery, their purpose. We really don't know what they were used for. They appear to have stopped being made when the Spanish invaded, and were not widely known about until the 1940s. What we do know is that many of the balls were aligned. They were sometimes in straight or curved lines, arranged in triangles, squares or parallelograms. Four of the balls were found to align perfectly with magnetic north. Sadly, we can't observe such alignments today, as most of the balls have been moved from their original location and transported to new sites around Costa Rica and beyond. We therefore have to hope that the measurements made more than 50 years ago were accurate, but we obviously can't check this ourselves. Another observation is that many of the balls were found on top of low mounds, some of which were aligned. Some alternative researchers believe they point to places of interest for navigational reasons, such as Easter Island, or even Stonehenge in England, but this does seem somewhat far-fetched in my opinion, as they would have surely all been situated on the coast. Others speculate that the balls were territorial markers, or as a way for cultural leaders to demonstrate their power, being status symbols, indicators of power and wealth. The idea is that they were used as symbols of rank, the larger and more perfect the sphere, and the greater their number, the greater the prestige and importance of the village and its inhabitants. So, what do I think? I don't believe there are navigational markers to places in faraway lands on Earth, but I do believe the most plausible purpose for creating them was to simply be astronomical markers. For a start, like the moon, stars and sun, these objects are spherical. We know that many were specifically aligned into lines, curves and shapes, and although we can't know the original layout with any accuracy, it really isn't too much of a stretch of the imagination to think they mapped key stars, planets or constellations, as well as the positions of the moon, the sunrise and sunset and so on. It is true that the stone balls are often found in groups of a dozen or twenty stones, and that these groupings have been shown to be aligned in one or more ways. To back up the astronomical hypothesis, some of the stone balls are etched with decorative patterns and images, and some of the researchers who have looked closely say that these patterns are astronomical, like the example shown here. And this section of a star chart is believed to be carved onto one specific sphere. That's not to say they might have been used as symbols of power by villages and cultural leaders. We don't know the social structures and practices of these pre-Columbian people, we can only see the remnants of their society. I would love to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Another mysterious find I should add regarding the stone spheres is something that was mentioned by researcher Hugh Newman, and that is the find of a small black stone inside the large ball that was split open. As he says, there has not been a great deal of research done on this, but I would be interested to find out what geologists think. Were these smaller stone balls dead centre? Are they natural geological inclusions in the rock? I would guess they are natural inclusions, but if not, then this would certainly open a history-changing can of worms. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. You can also find me on social media, so please follow on Instagram and Twitter, and please like the Facebook page. All of the addresses for the social media accounts are listed below in the description. Thank you very much.